in a time before mobile phones, computers, the Xbox or Wii games, children created their own games, playing outdoors in the fields and making their own fun. The spot was laid in the pit for maybe four months, the month of January. When the prices were right, the farmer would gather up a few men and take a tractor and trailer out to the field. He had a whole lot of merchants around at that time trying to buy them, laugh the farmers. One of the merchants was John Denny, he was sort of a local man there at Fawn and he nearly took on in a show and the lagging area. He always got the farmers so when they struck a price he would left in two or three tonne bags. That's when the farmer then would have gathered up a few men and went out to the field and left it at the parties. Put the away the clay and stuff the rushes. <laughs> and shovel the parties or grip them and maybe times your hand onto the trailer. We'd be very busy, like from end of September to February at the particular seed spots. And when you go around, and, and you go around the farmers and you left off 10 ton or 5 ton or 20 ton of bags, depending on the quantity of growing, you know. Well, digging them and getting them into the wee pots was a, a, a big effort, but it was only half of the process because you had to then bring them in from the wee pot. You brought them, put them over a waller. It's a potato grater, it's called properly, but we just called a waller. And it sizes them, and it, uh, they they have to be the seed has to be between one and a quarter inches and two and a quarter inches. This is before metric came in. Hey, hey, hey! Come on, come on! 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 Come on, well, were there rats in the pots? No. no. So you had two riddles in the water, uh, one undersizing and another oversizing. And it was what went in between was the seed that went to the Mediterranean. And the, the tops that went over the top riddle were called ware, and they went to double market. And the wee ones that went through the under riddle, they were called chats, snats, different names for them. And uh, for a number of years, the farmers just fed those to the cattle. But then as time went on, you would have heard of baby roasters in the hotel. Well, that was a, a quite a quite a, a valuable market for the small ones, you know. But a limited market, but a market for them as well. But it was the potatoes in between the two riddles that the farmers concentrated on to get them to go to the Mediterranean for seed. I must them bags now and I need them ready this evening, very urgent. But so that's, that's very short notice. Well, the boat's coming out in the morning, so the pretty inspector's coming, he's going to work late. Right. Uh, and I'll be around at tea uh, time and put them on, because I want to be over the border at 9 o'clock. Right, you see that, boys? Now, we're heading to work so hard. We're looking at the home end of this evening. Are they getting cutting them up if we're not going to go, you know, because uh, frost, uh, frost... Well, I'll, I'll go in and get the lorry. I have no other load to do in the day, and I'll be back out then. That's all right, John. We'll oh, do our best. Have a tight enough home on you, John? Well... No, we'll head them for you, John. We'll I'll get you just half in a bottle this evening if you don't. There you go, boys. <laughs> Half of a bottle each. John, what are you doing for you? I was sorry to see the seat buttons sort of drying up. I moved on to other things, but uh, I think at the height of the seat business, way back in the 60s, it between 40 and 60,000 tonnes of seed would be exported at Donegal, at a dairy dock, for the major export uh, dock, Rathmullen and Mulroy Bay, you know. I mean, going down to Mulroy Bay the first time, and he died. I thought it was in the wrong place, and he died down through a field in the docks. That's the God's truth. And I was down there, and I feel I seen this big boat, couldn't believe it. Mulroy Bay, that's a long time ago, that's way back in the early 60s, I would say, you know. What a good life. Good life, aye. If you had 10 tons up for John Denny, for instance, uh, some of the inspectors like Willie Hay, Fred Henderson, uh, any, uh, any of those put inspectors working for the Department of Agriculture would have come out and they would have just picked 10 bags maybe out of 10 tonne and they told you the bag they wanted so they picked all over the, 
the pile like and give me that bag, give me that bag, and you had to bring that bag out. Maybe, maybe a little bit of scab on them, but maybe uh, not too bad. Uh -huh. you know, the well, we'll see now when we look at them. You only pick a bag. There? I'll pick a bag and date that. Right, the second bag down from the top there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Very good. Thank you. Let's put it up on the skip. As you see, we're working with a skip. We grade them on the water. They then go over what we call a skip. It's made with timbers and they're brought down it on a gradual slope and every potato is individually examined before they go into the bag. So the inspector re-examines about a bag a ton, maybe 10 bags to 10 tons. Well, John did his weight on the mirror because he said that the... pressure to get her. Oh, you seem to them all right there. Uh -huh. you know, the size is okay there. That's good. Uh, okay. uh, in top of the day, were you going? Ah, oh, that was my 10th lot today. Uh -huh. They're trying to get the boat from the Sundari this evening. Uh, boat? Uh, uh, they're pretty sure this evening. Uh, well, the Egyptians are in there inspecting them after I look at them here. Oh, sure. If he gets any blight, they'll be back out to you again. Mm -hmm. That's all right. They look all right. You're happy enough. Put the seals on. I'm happy enough. Uh, thank you. All right. Of course, I'll sample like the year in the country. Yeah, not so bad this year. Uh, There's some scab, but uh, uh, we put dry weather early on. But, uh, no, right, uh, uh, not too much blight. When you, right. you, get, you get scab, you log it blight, and if you get blight, you log it scab. Like, that's and uh, the bags then were all sewn with by hand. Every bag in that 60,000 tons that I mentioned was sewed by hand with what is called a packing needle. And you start in the middle of the bag with a loop. You go across and you make like a, a sow's ear in the bag and you come right across again, you make another one, come back to the centre. You leave a little tail about two inches and the inspector puts a seal on that, a red metal seal. Mm -hmm. They can't go anywhere without the seal on them. No. no, that's for sure. <coughs> it takes the seal and to get them to their destination. That's it. I'll write the docket now. We need, you need the docket along with young Tidari, the Egyptian inspector. We're looking for this docket as well. You're yeah. happy enough with them. Though. We're happy enough with them. Yes, uh -huh. All right. Merchant, who's the merchant for these? John, John, John Denny, born foot. John Denny, born foot. And back about 1965, the potato growers in North Donegal, and his own, and East Donegal, export about over 60,000 tonne of seed to about 15 different uh, countries, the Mediterranean countries and to the uh, Far East and Middle East. Nice party, already. Uh, you're a wee bit early for us. Ah, but, well, uh, wrong, wrong enough, we just got the seals on them there. Nice party, I mean, one time way back, up to this uh, back called Jackie McCarr Club in Fawn, up the bosom. Big Jackie was a nice man, still living yet. And uh, <coughs> took three 12 ton loads of that man's house in the one day, up to this seat. Three 12 ton loads in the one day. And everything was loaded by hand and unloaded by hand. Even in the docks and day, there was no forklift sometimes at all. There was all the forklifts just with your arms out, you know, and that's the way it was done. And there's, there wasn't what you call hard work, that was the work of the day. I prided myself on being able to build a good straight load of spuds on the lorry. You didn't need a plumb or a, what they call these things for keeping the thing straight and measure. I could just keep them with my eye, keep them as steady as a rush, and you threw them over your head to keep the lugs on the arse out all the time, that's where you built them. And uh, you could, if you're building, and whenever I put a load on at the end of the day, a farmer said they had 10 tonnes, when I put the last bag on, I could tell them, you're a bag over or you're a bag short. I had no quality count because I knew the way the loop would finish. I mean, one time up on a man, Joe Bradley, the farm up in Dundrain, and he had 10 ton up, you see, King Edward seeds. And I said, Your bag short? No, I said, um, I filled every bag that he's left up. Well, I said, Your bag short? And in this new barn built with these vents, you know, these vents they've round them that they are on. And I looked up and seen the bag shoved in it. What we can do that, but that's right, there's a bag up there. He fucked every bag, but he didn't. He forgot about the one he shoved on. That's the good. But Joe, it wasn't intentional, Joe was doing it. I, but I knew the crowd was tight, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a label goes into the bag as well, inside the bag. 
with your growers number on it. So if there is a problem when they arrive in, in Spain or wherever, they can trace them back to the grower because the number's inside the bag as well as on the label outside the bag. Egypt, Cyprus, the Canaries, Morocco, all, all those countries we send seed to, out of Derry Key, out of Rathmullen and out of Mulroy. So we were sending out of three ports simultaneously and, and a hive of potato inspectors were on hand uh, from the Department of Agriculture to make sure that they met the top pristine condition. Potato marketing and harvesting has changed greatly. Long gone are the potato gatherers and squads. Today it's much less labour intensive. For to a great extent, machine has replaced man. We're looking at like Cleveland, 2200. She would have come into Ireland but early 90s, I think. So they didn't fence compared to the old way of yelling at buds. She picks up two runs, two girls to yellow. She shall just play out of them. But the man then has to pick the stones out. Four men to up at the stone end of it. And then they can do that in the of it and all go down into the salute and the boxes. Well protected for sure, hailstones. <laughs> That's a dig, but we're digging in from 50 to 70 tonne a day. Take your land and play for prowling and cultivating and sprays and fertilizing. And take it and get them into bags. It costs a 3,000 euros to put an egg spot out now, out the door. There's big money involved in growing potatoes. There's a lot more machines you never see and shades and stuff. Now, when you pack one up at dinner time, do you? Do you realise the value of that? I, I, would, I love my spuds. <laughs> I couldn't do it without me. a good dry spud. I couldn't eat a ban. When the boxes are a fault, the farmer can take them away to his shed and lift them out for the forklift and stop them in the shed. That's the modern way now. Charlie Doherty is a big potato grower and his uh, facilities up there now at Bridge Inn that caters for everything. The modern day now, the chill warehouses. Uh, we're growing as long as I can remember, you know, this last 30 years. Uh, I suppose the last 10 years we've uh, invested a lot of money into refrigerated units and uh, an ambient store and the screen store here as well, which you know specialised for growing potatoes. When we dig them, they, they come straight in, they go straight into the fridge to get dried out. Uh, they're cured, at, we store them at about 12 degrees for the first fortnight, and then they're brought down to about 3 degrees. And uh, once they're dried out, uh, we bring them out and we put them through the, the big grater there for the boxes to split grate them to get the seed out of them. And then they go straight back into the fridge again. And then as they're needed then for uh, for market, for, for bagging, uh, we, um, we bring them out and they go through the the hopper here and the riddle and the brushed, the brushed as well. Keris Pink is the main one in Donegal, uh, that's, that's, that's the main one. A good dry flurry potato. Um, you want them 22% uh, dry matter from that 22 to 24% dry matter. I have a machine there that will that can test that before I burn off so that uh, I know that the dry matter is right before, before I burn off. Like years ago you just when you thought they were ready you just burned them off. Uh, they mightn't have been good enough for eating. Go through this, this packing unit, it's an Alfield packing unit for uh, this was brought in Germany and it's all mo modified. The only job you have to do is the picking and the lifting the bags at the end, like you know. We only put up what we need. Uh, you, do, you, don't, uh, you don't just keep bagging away and then, like what we bag today, we sell tomorrow. That's, that's the way it is. Uh, uh, this time of year we wouldn't be as busy because uh, it's early in the year, everybody's pushing away like but once uh, once you come to March, April, uh, when the refrigerated unit comes into its own, let's say the ordinary guy hasn't got a refrigerated unit, uh, the spots start get weaseled up like you know, so people, the, the shops want the quality spots so the, we would be busy around that time. I mean at the minute we'd only be selling uh, you know, 15-20 tonne a week. Uh, Come March, April, May, it'll be 15 ton a day, like, you know, we'll be going out, you know. So I remember 30 years ago when I was a wee fella working with Father, and you were working on the skip and that, that there, and uh, it was all manual labour, like, you know, uh, no forklifts, no, uh, 
you know, no, no refrigerated units, it's not there, it's all hundred bags lifting and it was, it was heavy work now, like, you know, but I mean, now it's, uh, I mean, it's still a, a lot of work, but it's, uh, you spend in the long hours, but it's it's the picking and the bagging off and, and that, like, but the uh, forklift does most of the lifting, you have all the boxes there, everything into boxes, uh, the only times the bag is at the very end, like, you know, not there, that, that, that'll work out today, you know, that's done here, like, you know. It's good memories of yesteryear that brought this project to life. A nostalgic visit to past times, reuniting family and friends, old and new. But for the Gallagher family who worked this soil, this journey back to the potato field had deeper sentiment. It took me back to when I was eight and ten. Forty odd years just drifted away. We were all together. We might have been adults. But I could feel, still feel the connection. But it felt my heart. But I looked in, I think, being thanks be God, we have a lot to be thankful for. And them hard times would make us appreciate now there's no such thing as a recession. That everybody talks about a recession. But if they'd lived through a recession, they would be thankful for what they have today. Going back into the field to make this DVD, it meant a great deal personally to myself and my family. Because it brought back great memories of the time of the mother and father when we went out with them. And to go into the field and see the tractor digging and to lift a couple of parties and smell the fresh clay, it was great. And it was great to see the, all the farmers and friends and neighbours taking part to make this DVD. It was very good to meet them again. We met a lot of people that I didn't see for years. It took me back to when I was a young fella, maybe 10 or 11. It was hard times then, but to redo it again, it was great to reenact the, the past on the memory of mother and father. On the final day of the digging, you'd have no bother getting the full squad gathered up because they knew it was the last day in, of the season. And you'd come into the field and they'd be singing and cheering. There'd be no, they wouldn't be worrying about cold hands or frost or anything like that. It didn't matter. So they all come in singing and cheering and enjoying themselves for the last day. They took about two tea breaks in the last day to keep going, get finished up early. Normally you didn't finish up to six. The last day you would have finished up at half four. And it was a great day, everybody was happy and gillered, they gillered away, even they were gillered two stunts, it didn't matter. If they know that at the end of the season they were finished, and they were getting a minute pound for it. They wanted to get bed up early, so they kept going. Well, the last day of the digging, they've been a bit of carry on, high spirits, and they're all happy so they were. And they run out the gate, they didn't walk out the gate, they run out the gate because they know that it was the end. And that's the way it ended up. <laughs> all the gillers reached for a winning empty baskets just and they threw them up in the air, and as high as they could go and they enjoyed the crack. That was the end of the dig for the season. Back in the 1980s, in the townland of the Cross, there was 15 or more Gullivers, Davy was the boss. Well, he set up the fine team, we gathered by the acre. In no time at all, sure they had their first taker. They gathered all around, the farmers near and far. Up and down the countryside, sometimes they traveled far. There were all kinds of diggers, they came from far and near. And in the pretty fields, there was one thing that you'd hear. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, look upon the digger. 
Come our way with the digger The drills are getting longer And the stints are getting bigger Come on, come on, the digger Come our way with the digger To the more that we can gather Our pay will be much bigger Now in the pretty fields They always gathered meat Within a few good days Should have had your job complete Now Davy was the man He kept things on the move Up and down the drills Should we kept them in their groove I go under every arm. But the morning food went there and booed them twice, you see. Are we going to get you cast in, sir? Are you going to laugh your head? Sadly no more gathers, it's all done by machine The gathering days are over, but our memories will stay clear Up and down that lagging valley, sure you'll no longer hear Come on, right there. Come on. Come on, come on the digger, come our way with the digger The drills are getting longer, and the stints are getting bigger Sure, our pay will be much bigger. David, I just on, on behalf of everyone, I want to thank you for coming up with the idea, and we're just delighted to be involved in it and share in this wonderful experience of our past. But as I said, it's our living history; it will now be recorded. Thank you, David. <laughs>